Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Henry Schein Dental Academy webinar series. My name is Adam, and I'll be your moderator. We're excited to welcome Tara Waldrop, who is the Dental Advanced Application Engineering Specialist at 3M as our speaker, and Tara will be discussing how 3M ReliX Universal can help simplify your direct and indirect restorative workflows. At any point during the webinar, we encourage your participation. If you have any questions, please feel free to type them into the Q&A section of your control panel, and we'll answer them live at the end. Henry Shine is not offering CE credit for viewing or attending this presentation live or on demand. And this webinar is sponsored by 3M. So with that, I'll throw it over to Tara. All right, thanks, Adam. Uh, I wanna thank everybody really for attending this webinar. Um, I'm, happy to, I'm ha really happy to talk to you. Uh, that's really a big part of my job. My job at 3M is really uh, to listen to dental professionals like you to understand what you really need and then work with our scientists to develop products. I manage field evaluations, uh, run things like focus panels. And then once our, we're really confident that we have actually developed what you really need and what you want, then I make sure you understand how to use our products. But speaking with dentists is the most important and my favorite part of my job. So, uh, legal requires me to tell you that as an employee of 3M, I have, an, I have financial interest in 3M oral care materials or equipment discussed during this program. So let's get into the real stuff. So your workflows are very complex. Of course, I don't need to tell you that. Um, but because I talk to doctors all the time, they, you know, doctors like you, you always ask us to find ways to make your workflows more efficient, by removing steps, help decrease inventory, minimize staff training, and make outcomes more predictable. Uh, I'm happy to share with you today information about how Relax Universal and Scotch Bond Universal Plus adhesives will help with all of those requests. Cementation is very complex. It's there's so many, that's like the slide before said, there's like 60 steps or 60 things that goes through your mind when you're trying to figure out, you know, every patient is different, every tooth is different, um, every situation is different. What, you know, am, am I trying to maintain as much tooth structure as possible? Am I, you know, is this a very aesthetic patient? Where in the mouth is this? So, you know, you, you could choose glass, you can choose a hybrid material, you might choose stainless, you can choose a PFM. There's so many choices. And then if you do a root canal, there's so many different sorts of posts you can use. Every one of these different types of material requires different pretreatment. Um, and, you know, depending on the situation, the, situ the uh, cementation is also different. So, the challenge is that, you know, you have to carry a lot of cements. You had to up until today, carry a lot of different cements, primers, adhesives, and all of that um, so that you can be prepared. So for instance, now, as you guys all know, um, there's conventional cements that have been around for a long time, the GIs, there's RMGIs, which are very, very popular. Um, we have one Relax Looting Plus as an example of that. Then there are, you know, some specialty type cements like our uh, veneer cement, where it's a light cure only so that, you know, you have lots of working time with veneers. But there are also these dual cure resin cements. There's self-adhesive resin cements. Um, ours is Unisim. There's another example here, there's a whole bunch of different adhesive resin cements. All of them require at least one bottle um, of adhesive, oftentimes more than that. And then, you know, the cement and you have to, you have to keep all that straight and know when you're supposed to use it and make sure your assistant understands how to use it. So we have, you know, we, in talking to doctors, they tell us a lot of things. And I, I personally been on this product, this, these products I'm gonna talk about, I've been working on these for many, many years since they were just a flicker, just an idea. Um, and so, you know, a lot of feedback, a lot of voice of the customer. Um, doctors really tell us that they really, you know, 
aren't happy with having to carry multiple resin cements. Um, and like I said, that cause, that leads to, you know, your stock fee goes up. You uh, have to make sure your trap is, your staff is always trained. Um, all these different kinds of cements and these adhesives and primers um, can just make for confusion. And then of course there is this, you know, the issue where things expire, nothing has, nothing lasts forever. And so once you've got it open, then you're gonna have expired materials that you're gonna have to discard. And um, not to mention, you know, like the misuse sometimes of adhesives, not on purpose, but, you know, sometimes you're supposed to do one drop of bottle A and one drop of bottle B and the more than one drop will come out. And anyway, then you run out of one bottle and then you have to throw them both away because you can't really, usually you can't just buy one, one bottle. You have to buy both again. So in talking to doctors, it told us, you know, they're tired of it throwing away cements and, you know, instead of carrying multiple cements, wouldn't it be awesome if they could just have one? And, you know, even, even we thought, well, I don't know, it's a stretch, you know, cause I mean, it's hard, it's hard to, it's really hard to develop new products like this. It's hard to really push that envelope. Um, but we have, you know, awesome team. And so we just set our mind to it and decided we were really gonna do the very best we could um, to achieve the objective. And, you know, the objective here was this uh, novel universal resin cement that would simplify your uh, resin cement workflow. And in taking into consideration everything that you had said to us. So, you know, provide a universal solution that simplifies all aspects. So that was our goal. So what we came up with is a solution that virtually covers virtually all dual cure bonding indications um, to simplify the cementation workflow. With these products, we're able to fulfill all of the dental dentist requests and no compromises. And I could tell you that is hard to do. Um, you know, we doctors we talk to thousands of doctors really, and they give you this list and the lists are usually pretty similar, but when you're developing new products, especially when you're trying to achieve something that's never been done before, you usually have to compromise somewhere. Like, you know, if you want really high bond strength, you have to give something else. If you want, you know, there's always something, there's usually a trade-off, but honestly, in these products, there weren't any. And for me to be able to go back to our customers and our doctors and say, you ask us for this list of things and that's what we did. So for me personally, um, and professionally, it's really been uh, very rewarding. So let me just review quickly here and share with you how it is that we simplify your workflow. First of all, you know, relaxed universal resin cement can be used as an adhesive and a self-adhesive resin cement with or without the dedicated Scotch Bond Universal Plus adhesive. So none of, you know, you don't need multiple adhesive cements. You don't need self-adhesive resin cements. You don't need RMGIs. You don't need all of that. And all those primers, you really honestly can get rid of all of these and go down to just two products that can be used for all of your direct and indirect workflows. And I'm gonna tell you about how that works. So, Really, there are these two components that can do it all. So Scotch Bond Universal Plus Adhesive is the next generation of universal adhesive. You all may be familiar with Scotch Bond Universal that we launched about 10 years ago. And at the time that was really revolutionary. And so we took that to the next level. So it works as an, these, this combination works as an adhesive uh, on the tooth well, excuse me, Scotch Bond Universal Plus works as an adhesive on the tooth and it works as a restoration primer for all the restoration materials. So you don't need any more. You don't need all of these primers. You don't need you know, a whole bunch of different adhesives. You just need this one bottle. So here, let's look at this. This is an example of a clinical case that was where the uh, system was used in the adhesive mode, meaning used it with um, Relax Universal and Scotch Bond Universal Plus. 
and it's going to show how it was simplified. So the tooth is prepped. Um, they try in the, uh, the inlays. Those are etched. And then Scotch Fund Universal Plus is used as the silane primer. And then um, the prep is, there's a selective etch done. So then Scotch Bond Universal Plus is then used as the adhesive on the tooth. And then in this case, because it's an inlay, then the cement is dispensed into the prep. And then the, so what's interesting and doctors tell us they really like this. So the cement stays Unless there's be a force being um, used upon it, the cement will stay where it is. So the excess is not gonna run unless you, you try to move it. So if you move it with your explorer or whatever, then it'll move. But if you don't touch it, it won't move. So it's gonna express out and it's gonna stay right there. Then um, you can tack cure it for two, three seconds. This is not, um, I'll get into this later, but I just want to say one of the main things doctor to doctors told us is like, help help make it easier to clean up. You know, the excess cleanup for some resin cements, including ours at 3M, can be really challenging. And they love to use, doctors tell us they love to use RMGIs because they're so easy to clean up. And so really that was the goal for cleanup, to make it as easy as an RMGI, and we did it. And so um, you can tack cure it or you can wait for it to reach that gel phase. And then you'll clean it up. And in a minute here, I'm gonna show you just what that looks like and uh, how it comes off. It comes off in big pieces. Um, so then in this case, the doctor decided to do a final light cure. And then the picture on the far right shows the final situation. So back to this reducing complexity and uh, you know minimizing your inventory, I've been in offices and asked assistants to show me drawers and it's sometimes it's really shocking how many different kinds of adhesives and primers and tips and you know you can't switch tips around so you really need to have if you have different like here there's one two three different uh, syringes each one of those would require a different kind of tip um, they really aren't you know there isn't a generic auto mix tip and um, so you have to make sure you have all of those and, you know, that everything is still, uh, you know, hasn't expired yet. And so with these two products, you can literally bring it down to this. So you have ReliX Universal that can be used for really anywhere. But I mean, if I'll, I'll go into it later, but I, I still can see a place for an RMGI if you're looking for if you have patients where you really want that fluoride release, that would be, you know, a reason to maybe still have an RMGI. Um, but if, but if fluoride release isn't an issue, then you, then these two are all you need. So, like I said, this excess cleanup really was an important part of the development of this new cement. And it required a new, uh, a novel initiator system. And so we wanted something that would give us really high bond strength, but also be easy to clean up. And so those two things were extremely tricky. And if you've had this in your hand, you'll understand that we were able to accomplish it. And it was, you know, hats off to our guys, um, in our scientists who were able to do this, but um, these two, you know, the, the initiator allows us, like I said, to have really high bond strength and at the same time, make it really easy to clean up after a tack cure. And also it's what gives us this, this uh, improved rheology where it just means that the cement is gonna stay where it's put unless you apply some sort of force. This information uh, and a couple of slides to come came from the field evaluation that we did. And doctors told us a lot of things um, about, here's what they said about our excess cleanup, that um, they agree that the excess outflow stays where it's put and that that really helps with cleanup and that the excess is easy or very easy to clean up. 
And so that, that made us really happy. I mean, of course, when you go into a field evaluation, some of you may have participated in those, um, you know, but the time we get there, we've tested it. We've had it in a lot of people's hands. And um, so, but it's great when we get it out to doctors during field evalu evaluations that they confirm the things that we've, that we've learned during the development uh, period. So here, like I said, oh, I told you earlier, I was gonna show you some thick pictures. So here's, you know, prep and the, this is with the zirconia crown. So this, it's uh, sandblasted and then um, Reliax Universal is then dispensed. And you can see, I'm gonna show you some more about this tip. This tip, tip is incredible. It's very tiny um, and it allows doctors to put the cement exactly where you want it. So you don't have to just, fill the thing up half or two thirds or whatever you like to do. You can really sort of paint it where you want it with this tiny tip. Uh, and then, you know, you, it, it, saves, it saves you extra, extra cement. And then when you get to clean up after a tack here of two to three seconds, look, look at this, it comes off just like, like you're using an RMGI. It reaches this really nice um, sort of gel, almost chalky, not quite, not really chalky is not the right word, but really a firm gel and it just peels off in one big piece. So then now let's talk about this awesome new syringe. So this was something else. This is, doctors didn't know about this so they couldn't ask us for it, right? But what they asked for was a way to avoid throwing away all that cement that's in these big auto mix tips. I mean, you know, at 3M, we have cements that are sold in these auto mix syringes. They've been really the, the standard for a long time. Um, but we wanted to get away from that. We wanted to reduce waste and we did that. So when you, this syringe you'll see is very much smaller than the auto mix syringe, but you get the same number of applications. And I have some information I can show you from the dental advisor. They did all that testing and they were the ones who brought back to us this 80% less cement waste. So the cement that's in this tip is very minimal. And um, you, maybe you didn't even realize it. I know you knew that you were throwing away cement, but maybe you didn't realize that you were throwing away 80% of the cement. And that is because that's how much is in, trapped in these, these uh, large auto mix tips. We also wanted to make it easier for people to handle. And, you know, we got just a lot of great feedback, people talking about how easy it is to handle it, how they're able to manipulate it, how they're able to just place the cement exactly where they want it. And so, you know, it's a very controlled situation. Um, we also have on this tip, you can put the um, little root canal extension. And so, you know, get all the way down to the bottom of the, um, the canal and fill it up with no air bubbles. So, you know, once you get this syringe in your hand, it's really hard to understand how different it is until you put it in your hand. And once you do, you just won't ever want to go back. If you're like the people that we've talked to, you won't, you won't want to go back. Um, handling customers say that they really like the extrusion force, uh, overall very, very satisfied with the um, overall handling. And then this is, I'm gonna show you, this is some more about this tip. So these tips, so especially today, you know, in this world that we're in where everybody's hyper, um, hyper vigilant about hygiene and the auto mix syringes, the traditional auto mix syringes, you're instructed to store with the use mix tip in place. So you get this syringe, your assistant unpackages it. There's a little storage cap on top and I can tell you, you know, 99% of the time they take that storage cap off and throw it away. So then you put, then they put an auto mix tip on there, a new tip on, and then at the, you know, after you're done using it, then that's how you store it. You store it with the used mix tip in place. And when that cement inside that tip hardens, that forms the seal. And that's just been how you do it. All of our instructions for resin cements say that, you know, you store it with the used mix tip in place. This one, the tip opens up the barrel. So the syringe itself is closed 
as you can see here in this image too, it's closed until you put this tip on. When you put the tip on, it opens up the valve and then you express it. And then when you're done, you take the tip off, you throw it away and the syringe is closed. So it's not gonna dry out. You don't have to worry about storing it with a used mix tip. And you know you don't have to worry about where did my storage cap go if you want to start with storage cap because I can tell you it's gone, and so that gives a really nice clean hygienic um, self sealing syringe which um, is also very small and it's easy it's easy to wipe off. So here's a quick little video that just goes into a little more detail about this syringe. You can see that little little syringe. It has a little mechanism inside that fits down sort of like a lock and key. And then you turn it and then um, it opens up the syringe, allows you to dispense what you need. And then you remove the tip and now the barrel is closed. So that's how you store it. So this is sort of a comparison. Um, you could see on the uh, left-hand side, this is the new syringe. On the right-hand side is a look at the auto mix syringe. And really, no matter what you do, you know, no matter how careful you, the assistants are, uh, you know, it, it can wind up being a little bit of a mess. And so, um, if you don't put a storage cap on here that barrel is open on the traditional automix syringes. And so, like I said, then what you have to do is either do a really good job of keeping track of that storage cap or you start with the use mix tip in place. Here is this information from the dental advisor. This is third party data, um, just comparing different mix tips. And like I said, I bet you've all seen all of these, um, you know, the product that it's intended for use is next to it. And really you're not supposed to use, you know, one of these is not supposed to be used for each one. Inside of here, although they look very similar, um, inside they have different number of paddles. And so if you don't use the right mix tip, you're really gonna compromise the mix of the um, two parts of the cement. And you can just see here uh, how much smaller this new mix tip is. It does two things. It gives you, uh, saves 80% of the waste. And it also, on the next slide, I'll show you, it also has 50% less plastic waste. So here's that one. So, you know, this is a big deal too, right? So at 3M, we um, are always working on ways to be more sustainable, to have less impact on the environment. And this was an important thing for part, important part of our development of this new syringe. So with the new syringe and the cap, like I said, you have 50% less plastic waste. So now let's talk more about performance. So what another thing we wanted to do and doctors talk to us all the time too, is like, you know, I'm kind of concerned like under you know, under even glass, sometimes it's too thick um, for the light to get all the way through or for you to feel like the light's getting all the way through, um, especially all the way through if you're trying to also cure an adhesive. Um, so we wanted to, what we wanted to do, well, and before I go there, traditionally, we always said, look, if you can put light on something, it's always better, right? Light curing will get you the maximum bond strength quicker. And sometimes it gives you a higher bond strength than if you allow something to self cure. We didn't want that anymore. We wanted to have the same high bond strength, whether you were able to get light to it or not. And we were able to accomplish that. So um, you could see a comparison here of the bond strength. This is the shear bond strength. And the shear bond strength uh, in both light cure and self cure mode is statistically the same. So that's a big deal. So you don't have to worry anymore about, oof, you know, is it, is it cured? Did my light get through to it? Is my light working well? You know, all of that. You don't have to worry about that as much um, with this new cement. This is the tensile bond strength. 
a similar situation. Again, we didn't want to have any compromises on bond strength, whether you were able to get light to it, to it or not. Um, this is just showing you one more time that the self-cure and the light cure mode gives you the same, statistically the same um, bond strength, which is really cool and really nice high bond strength too. So, you know, with the fast and really excellent bond formation, if you let it self-cure, um, it's five minutes after, um, after you seed it, uh, it gives you the confidence in a strong bond right from the start um, and higher than, higher than our other cements and higher, higher than other cements that are out there as well. And this is a little more about that science that we were talking about, the new chemistry. And so, you know, it, it allows for a higher degree of, of conversion. So I'll just go to the next slide and show you here. So typically a standard resin cement, um, the degree of conversion, meaning, you know, all the different bonds that are made is about you know somewhere between 65 and 70 percent, and with this new one because of this new um, initiator system, we're able to achieve 94 percent conversion, which is you know a pretty dramatic change, and that um, you know it starts off hydrophilic, and interacts with that smear layer, and then once it's set up, it becomes hydrophobic, and it gives you a really stable uh, color stable, very, you know, high bond strength. It's not affected by moisture and things like that. Now we'll go into, so if you want, if you already have really high bond strength with Relax Universal Resin Cement on its own. I mean, for most cases, in most situations, it's really more than you need. Um, but, you know, there's these there's, there's indications, different kinds of materials like glass ceramics and such that really recommend the use of an adhesive. And sometimes you just want that extra boost and, of, of bond strength and that confidence that sometimes adding an adhesive can give you. And so if, if you want that, then these two are developed to work together. And also, you get some all the great stuff that came with Scotch Bond Universal that you, if you've used it before, everything that you know that you got there, you're going to still have it. But now it's the first radio opaque all-in-one adhesive, and it's also both of these are also BPA derivative free, so that could be really important to a lot of your patients. And like I said, um, that these the adhesive will help boost the bond strength if if you feel like you want that. And also Scotch Bond Universal is a universal primer for all of your restorative materials. And obviously all your um, direct restorations as well. These two work together, no need to light cure the adhesive on the tooth. These two are designed to work perfectly together. Um, the Relax Universal will set off the cure of Scotch Bond Universal Plus and Scotch Bond Universal Plus boosts the bond strength. So for those of you who have used Scotch Bond Universal in the past, um, there was, we didn't wanna mess with that. I mean, that is an extremely popular universal adhesive and we didn't want to lose any of the benefits. And so we just said, okay, you know, team, we. We have to start here as an excellent place to start, and then we just need to make it better. And so that's what we did. So everything on the left here is what Scotch Bond Universal offers. And then everything on the right is what we added to it. So we added radio opacity, and I'll show you um, in a minute just what that can mean to you in your workflow. It, uh, it also bonds and seals caries affected dentin. So for those of you who are practicing minimally invasive dentistry, this, this adhesive has been shown to bond to and seal caries affected dentin. 
and bonus, you it's radio peg, so you can see that when you take an x-ray. So it will, you know, it sort of encapsulates any caries affected dentin that you may have left. So that really will help if you're trying to do that minimally invasive dentistry, which so many people are. It's, as I said, BPA derivative free. It'll improve the bond strength to glass ceramics. So this one has a, a really improved silane primer and just no need for an additional silane primer. The bond to glass ceramics is incredible. Uh, improved dual cure compatibility. These two things, like I said, we use them together. They, there's no need to light cure them. And then the vial has been optimized to make it easier to wipe off. There were a couple of little holes that were, you know, intentional in the cap of the um, Scotchman Universal bottle. Those were removed and some other things were done to smooth things out so it's easier to wipe off. So, and also um, Scotchman Universal was also really great at allowing you to dispense just one drop at a time, but this bottle even makes it better. So the confidence that you're only going to dispense exactly what you need, you're not going to waste anything. There's no, oops, two, three drops came out. That, that's not going to happen with this vial. You're going to get one drop at a time. So this is good for all your direct and indirect restorations. For all etching techniques, it'll replace all of your primers. Uh, virtually no post-op sensitivity. Scotch Fund Universal already had extremely low post-op sensitivity. This one's even lower. Um, there's this root surface desensitization. You can use it for that. So bonding and pits and fissures and all of that. So let's have a look, see here. So again, this is something else we didn't want to mess with. We didn't want you to have to figure out how to use the adhesive all over again. We wanted you to stick with the same instructions that you were familiar with if you use Scotch Bond Universal. So same thing, you apply it and you rub it in for 20 seconds, you air thin until it no longer moves. And then you, um, if you're doing a direct restoration, then you light cure it for 10 seconds. So here's a little bit about, you know, we wanted to make sure we didn't lose anything when we were, um, developing scotch bond we wanted to make sure that the bond strength was as good or better and we were able to achieve that so it's the equivalent or higher shear bond strength to dentin and enamel than than our earlier product and other competitive adhesives in all different modes you can see there and as adam said if i could see that there's some questions and there's some information in the chat i put um just side note here, I put the technical product profiles for both of these products into the chat. Um, Adam also put my email address in there. So, you know, feel free to download the technical product profiles. There's a lot more of this technical information in there for both of these products. And um, we're gonna take some questions at the end, but if we don't get to it, my email is there. So you can um, shoot me an email too, if you have questions that aren't answered in the TPP. So this is what another, you know, another look at that post-op sensitivity. You can see people were comparing it to Scotch Bond Universal. Um, and they said that the uh, post-op sensitivity was the same or less. And then this is, this is what really makes dentists happy when they realize, I mean, they like everything we tell them about Scotch Bond Universal Plus. And then we say it's, radiopaque it's the first one that's radiopaque and it's kind of like oh and then we say okay how many times do you look at an x-ray and you think what is that you know is that secondary caries did i leave something under there is that a gap you know what is that is you don't know because with with um translucent um adhesives it's hard to tell Right, so if you have any kind of pooling of that adhesive underneath, look, it, it's really questionable. And this, you can see here, 51% of doctors, doctors tell us that they have to interpret a questionable x-ray every day. So this is a big deal for us. So here's some examples of, you know, what that whole question, what is that? Well, it could be any of these things. It could be some liner that you use. It could just be a void in there. It might be just something that's, uh, you know, an artifact 
on the x-ray or it could be pooled adhesive. You just don't know. You just can't know. Um, and so oftentimes doctors tell us that they have removed restorations because they thought, you know, I'm going to, I got to see what this is. And I, and then they take it off and it was nothing. It was the adhesive. So this is, this is a really big deal. And you can see here, um, this on the right hand side is what your restorations are going to look like when you look at an x-ray, when you've used Scotch Bond Universal Plus. So here's our prior Scotch Bond Universal. Here's a two competitives. You can see that you just, you know, what is that? Don't know. Um, but over here, you'll be able to tell, okay, everything's cool. There's no, there's no decay here. I don't see any shadows. This is, this is all good. So this talks about using Scotch Bond Universal and uh, Relax Universal cement together. And you can see that you get really nice. I mean, 40 megapascals of shear bond strength is a lot, um, but you can boost it all the way up to 60 when you add Scotch Bond Universal Plus. And you can, uh, yeah, so when you're using it under, you know, if you're using it with zirconias, if you're using it, however you're using it, um, adding the adhesive makes your strength, the bond strength even higher. And here's a little bit about this enhanced silane functionality. So it was already pretty good in our earlier one and Barrier Link does a nice job with this too. Um, but with this one, we are, you know, it's a really nice bond to uh, glass ceramics here. And I know that this is something that's used, you know, something like Emacs and other glass ceramics are used quite often. So you really want to make sure you get that really nice high bond strength and the combination of Relax Universal and Scotch Bond Universal Plus will, will give you that in just those two components. So they're strong, this, this combination is really strong, like we said, on dentin and enamel. This is uh, showing in both uh, light cure and self-cure mode. So they, uh, yeah, just shows that you have really nice high bond strength. No matter what combination you use, you're gonna get really nice. And dentin, honestly, I mean, you know, it's not that hard to get a good bond to enamel, right? Everybody kind of knows that, but this bonding to dentin, that's the question. And um, when you do a crown prep, a big percentage of that tooth that's left is going to be dentin. And so, you know, is it is it compromised in some way? Am I going to get a good bond to that? This will eliminate those questions. And you only have these two, two components. And so with this combination, just two components, no need to like here. When you use these, you have to have three components. And over here, if you're going to use the varial link, you're going to have two components again, but you have to light cure. So with this combination, you don't ours, you don't have to, you can skip that light cure step and you only have two, two components. Here's a little bit more detail on, um, you know, strength on different uh, substrates. This one is dentin enamel and also uh, zirconia. And that's a self-adhesive on the left and with the adhesive on the right. So, you know, you're supposed to use an adhesive. You should use an adhesive when you're using glass. So that's on the right, there's this additional uh, dark green column showing you the really nice high bond strength when you use this combination on glass ceramic. Here is Dental Advisor, some more third-party um, information about the high bond strength, the, the highest of any self-adhesive cement tested and primarily on dentin enamel and zirconia substrates. And they, you know, they were super excited about the really high bond strength under zirconia. And, you know, zirconia is a growing category. If you do chair side, um, then, you know, you have, now you have the opportunity to do zirconia chair side. And, you know, in the posterior, it's a really becoming a go-to material with the, you know, you want that high bond strength, but now it's even aesthetic looking. And so you, but it's, it's, you're not going to get light through it. So you really need that self-adhesive um, 
cement that's going to get a high bond strength without light. And so the dental advisor was really impressed with the ability to get the nice high bond strength under zirconia. We have four nice aesthetic shades that are also fluorescent, which believe it or not, really makes a difference underneath things like glass or veneers, things like that. And you can see the fluorescent is similar to human tooth. The shades are different degrees of, you know, have different degrees of opacity. We have the, uh, the translucent. And you can also see here that they, these our four shades match extremely well with the uh, 3M Relax Try and Pace. So the Try and Pace are sold along with the veneer cements, but you can buy them separately. So if you're doing veneers, if you're doing something where you're concerned about the aesthetics, you want to know if A, is, is it going to, you know, maybe you're trying to block something or maybe you don't want, you know, you don't want to block it, but you also don't want the cement to change the color of your restoration in any way. And so you could try use these try and paste before you actually do the cementing to see uh, what that's going to look like. And the cement or the try and paste match the cured shade of the cement. Here talks about the color stability. So um, these shades were tested in, let me show you here, in copy. So this is a standard test and you soak it, you know, you do the bond, then you soak your uh, sample overnight, basically for 24 hours, 36 degrees C, 100% humidity. And you can see how, how ours did. So it's that high degree of conversion that we talked about earlier that makes this possible. So the radio opacity was improved on both, not just, we didn't, you know, Scotch Brand Universal Plus is the first radio opaque adhesive, but we wanted to boost the radio opacity of Relax Universal. And we did that. Now, Relax Universal, this is used here in a self adhesive, or, uh, yeah, the self adhesive mode. This uh, image on the far left hand side, it, the uh, radio opacity of Relax Universal is 200% uh, of Denton. So it's going to, it's even higher than enamel. So you, um, you're going to see it every time. So again, you're at the margin, you're going to be able to see. You know, did I get cement? Is it sealed well? Is my margin sealed up? Do I have cement everywhere that I want it to be? Uh, do I have it all the way in the canals? If I'm doing a root canal, you could see it everywhere. It'll show up really well on an x ray. And so that's another thing that people told us that they really wanted. Here is um, a nice aesthetic clinical case that was done with two things. A glass ceramic veneer and a zirconia crown. And you know, these are hard, right? So those two centrals are a challenge and getting them to match um, is always hard. So in this case, you could see how it was to start with, then they did the prep and this is what it looks like after two months. So pretty nice, pretty nice work there. Here are some more details of it. Um, the teeth were prepped. One, again, like I said, for a veneer, the other one for a crown. They did a good job of isolation, total etch on the, um, on the veneer prep. Use Scotch Bind Universal on the veneer and etch then the uh, veneer, I'm sorry, over here. Yeah, the veneer. So then the veneer was um, etched and then Scotch Bind Universal is used as the primer. It's a silane primer. Um, just the right amount of Relax Universal is placed on the veneer and then it's light cured. After this, in this case, it was after cleanup, it was light cured. And this one, this, that was the veneer. This is the um, zirconia crown. And so again, it's prepped, nice job of isolation. Then the crown is sandblasted and there's no, no, um, no primer required, but in this case, they did use Scotch Bond Universal Plus as a primer. 
just for a little bit of extra boost. Then the cement is applied inside the crown. And again, just, just the right amount so you don't have a lot of flash. And then um, this is the final situation. So this is just a summary slide. So to go back over what we said, you know, the goal was to really simplify your workflow, make it easier to, you know, for your staff to, to understand what you're using. Uh, you can use this on every indirect or direct restoration. You can have it in every one of your operatories. You don't have to have, you know, different things everywhere. What am I, which adhesive am I supposed to use with which cement? None of that, all that concern goes away. And if you're using it for everything, the likelihood that it's going to expire before you use it is almost, you know, it's almost zero, right? So you're using it all the time for everything. No more throwing it away or no more wandering, hoping it's going to work after the expired date, which I hope you don't do, but, you know, could happen. Um, it's easy to clean up. It cleans up like an RMGI, has that really cool new syringe with that tip that provides 80% less cement waste and 50% less plastic waste. Um, it's a self-sealing syringe that makes it nice and easy to clean up and you're not storing it with a used mix tip in place. Super high bond strength, really nice aesthetics with the four shades that are fluorescent. And then uh, Scotch Friend Universal is radio opaque for the first time. Um, and Reliax Universal is also has an improved radio passing. So, wow. Looks like we have some questions. I think we have, yeah, we have like 10 minutes left. So. Um, Adam, if you want to let me know what some of the questions are, if I can answer them now, I will, if not, we'll get back to you. And again, like I said, you have that TPP now for both these products. So be sure and, and download those. So you'll have them. And also my, my email address, I don't give it out to everybody, but I'm give it out to you guys. So you can bypass customer care and everyone, but it, you know, to be honest with 3M, we do such an awesome job. Our sales reps and the Henry Schein reps are so well educated. They, you know, we do a lot of training with them. So really your first line should be your, your reps. You know, if you want to call your 3M rep, they'll, they're happy to talk to you about this. They have a demo kit. They can show it to you. You can put it in your hand um, and then, you know, go from there. So they'll be able to answer every question. And if they, if they can't, then they know who to reach out to. So anyway, go ahead, Adam. What questions right. do we have? Looks like some folks are not seeing the PDFs of product profiles. So if you don't see them, please email webinars at henryshine.com and I will be happy to send them to you later tonight or tomorrow. All right, first question. Is there any relationship between resin cements and sensitivity post-cementation? If that happened and all other possible causes are being ruled out, are there any advice is there any advice to, to avoid this using resin cements? Um, Adam, at the beginning, did it say whether they were light curing the cement or self curing the cement? Um, it does it said, not. Okay. Use your imagination. Well, <laughs> use my imagination. Okay. Well, it depends on what cement and adhesive you're using. Um, if you know you, the key really, if you're using an adhesive, you you really, that needs to make sure, you need to make sure that that is cured, right? And there's a lot of um, troubleshooting that you can do to figure out what's, what could cause your adhesive not to cure. One could be you're using a combination where the chemistry isn't aligned. So you would, maybe you're using a brand of adhesive that's different than the brand of the cement. Or if you're light curing, well, in that case, you know, you'd want to, like cure your adhesive on the on the on the tooth prep. Don't recommend cross combining. You want to stick within within a brand, but uh, when in doubt, you know can light cure that adhesive on the tooth prep. And I know people don't want to do that because they worry about pooling. Um, but then if you're trying to light cure through a restoration, something that we've learned, and this is something that your shine or your 3M rep can help you with, is your light may not be working properly and the 3M reps have a way to check your lights to make sure that they're, you're getting the output that you think you're getting from your lights. Um, that there's, yeah, I mean, that right there is just a huge uh, issue that you think your light is working and, but it's, it's just not giving you the light you need to cure the products that you're using. So 
I don't know if I answered your question. There's a lot of troubleshooting that can go on there. Um, you could call your 3M rep. Uh, you can call our customer care hotline is crazy good. They have heard it all before and they can help you figure it out if, if, if I didn't answer it. So, or you can re send me an email. Your, my email should be there in the, in the chat. All right, next question here. Is there a true bond to zirconia crowns or just enhanced surface adhesion? There is actual bond to the zirconia. And so let me spend a minute talking about that. So you can, you do, if you use the right products, if you use this combination of products, you are gonna get a bond to the zirconia. And how that happens is when you sandblast it, so if you order it from a lab, your lab should have sandblasted it. If you did it chair side, you have to sandblast it before you seed it. But the key is that sandblasting opens up uh, molecules. It, opens, <laughs> it makes it so that M, uh, the MDP will bond with the zirconia. But it's a um, phosphate monomer that needs to bond to the zirconia. Bad news is saliva contains phosphate monomers. So if you try in a restoration that you got from a lab, they sandblast it, you try it in. Now, you even if you wash it with water, you're not gonna get that saliva contamination off. Now, every single um, spot that was open for bonding is taken up by the saliva, the phosphate in the saliva. So the best thing that you can do is after try-in, you need to clean it again. You need to clean it with something like an IvoClean, or you can use bleach that you use for your root canals. And in both of those cases, you need to make sure you rinse it off for a long time. Like you need to rinse IvoClean or rinse bleach off of those restorations longer than you think you would. So like 30 to 60 seconds, you need to run water on those things. The best way to do it though, is to sandblast it again after try-in. So if you're doing it chair side, don't sandblast before, sandblast after try-in. If you get it from a lab, it should have already been sandblasted, but you need to, you know, you need to make sure that you re-expose those bonds so that the phosphates in the adhesive or in the Relax Universal Cement can bond with zirconia. So. When you're using something like this, a resin cement, depending on which one you're using, you are getting a direct bond. But like I said, the key is cleaning after try-in. If you use something like an RMGI, you're not getting you're not getting a bond to anything except for the two structure. It just takes up space. Uh, just simply a question that says need zirconium primer. No, it's optional. All right. So you don't you don't need it with with either combination. You can, if you want to use it, then use Scotch Bond Universal Plus as your zirconia primer, um, but you can get a really high bond strength when you just use Relax Universal alone. Will a PO4 adherence for the zirconia crown and taglio be provided in the universal primer? Will a what? Say that again. Will a PO4 adherence for the zirconia crown and taglio be provided in the universal primer? Well, I'm gonna to have to get back to you on that one. So I've never heard it put like that, a PO primer. I'm thinking maybe um, a phosphate primer or phosphate, yeah, so a, a zirconia primer, if that's what you're asking for, that's in the universal, Scotch Run Universal Plus. If not, if I didn't answer it, I probably didn't. Um, just let us know and you can put it, you know, just sit, put something back in the chat or the Q&A said, no, that wasn't my question. Uh, and I'll get, I'll get the right answer for you and get it back to you. All right, moving right along. Uh, can you use this with indirect veneers? And if so, are there different colors? Yeah, there's four, um, there's four shades. You can use it with veneers and for sure. However, you know, the reason why we make a veneer cement is because it's a light cure only. So it depends on how many you're doing. We say, I think up to three units you can use, we would recommend using Relax Universal. I'm gonna go back and look at the, 
uh, indications one more time, but uh, if you know two units for sure, if that's all you're doing, you should be able to get those situated before it cures. But remember, Relax Universal is gonna start curing right away. So it's got that self-cure mechanism and so it will begin to cure. So it depends on your level of confidence that you're gonna be able to get however many veneers seated um, and get them exactly where you want them before that bond gets too much. So the answer is yes, but not very many at a time. And it, when in doubt, go with the veneer cement because it's, it's designed specifically for use with the veneers. And it has a lot more shade. The veneer cement has, I wanna say eight shades. This one has, we have four shades here. Uh, there was a question if we are offering CE. No, we are not offering CE for this webinar. Um, let's see, I've been having a lot of post-op sensitivity. Any suggestions on why or things to do to help? I use sandblaster and then clean crown with alcohol before seeding per the instructions. Uh, I would like to know what the restorative material is. And I would like to know, so if you're having a lot of post-op sensitivity, it's, it, I need more information. So read me the question one more time, Adam. Is there, are they using an adhesive? Um, I'm not sure, Tracy, if you're still on, please feel free to, to clarify, yeah. but it does not mention. Yeah, there's a lot we can do to help you troubleshoot sensitivity. So we can usually figure it out. So either send me an email, uh, contact your rep, or um, call your Shine rep or your 3M rep, or call the 3M customer care hotline, and they'll walk through with you and figure it out. All right. Uh, let's see. Scotch Bond Universal Plus will fully self-cure if initiated by the cement. Is that correct? Yep, that is okay. correct. Um, hmm. And that will help a lot. That's what really, uh, when you use these two things together, you can be sure that that adhesive is going to cure all the way down. I took a slide out, but I could send it to you later if you want, um, that shows just how it gets all the way down into the, you know, creates resin tags um, and it cures. And so you don't have to, that's when you get sensitivity. So like if you have any uncured adhesive that gets down into the tubules and you know, you're not getting enough light to it or the cement and adhesive combination is not curing, they're not curing each other. Then you, if you have any uncured anything down there in those tubules, that's when you're gonna get sensitivity. So. All right, well, I think we knocked them all out. Sweet. <laughs> lots, of, lots of interest for those PDFs. So keep sending the emails, webinars at henryshine.com if you're unable to download and I'll send them to you. Um, we can, uh, do you want me to stick them? Maybe it's, maybe we stuck them in there too early, Adam. You want me to stick them back in there again? Sure. Go for it. Let's see if I can. Let's see here. Okay, everyone. And again. Yep, there's one. And maybe if you're on your computer versus phone or iPad, you might not be able to download them. So if that's the case, again, just email webinars at henryshine.com. Cool. Yeah. Well, awesome. I think I'm going to the chat. I don't see any others. Again, Tara's email is in the chat as well. So please feel free to email her with any questions. Um, or again, you can email webinars at henryshine.com. We'll route that directly to Tara and the 3M team. Tonight's webinar was recorded. So everyone will get the recording of the webinar sometime in the next week. Again, we did not offer CE credits for this webinar. Um, on behalf of Henry Shine, thank you, Tara. Thank you, 3M. And hope everyone has a great night. Thank you.